In response to AMD's proprietary Level 3 cache, which increases the effective bandwidths of its GPUs, NVIDIA will include very large amounts of Level 2 cache in its upcoming RTX 40 series GPUs. The RTX 40 series will include up to 96 megabytes of Level 2 cache. This raises the questions. What is the difference between Level 2 cache and Level 3 cache? And how will NVIDIA's Level 2 cache compare to AMD's Level 3 cache? A GPU has two types of memory, cache and synchronous dynamic random access memory, also called SDRAM. SDRAM is generally much larger in quantity than cache, typically amounting to multiple gigabytes. However, SDRAM is also much slower than cache. SDRAM is used to store all visual assets that a GPU may need in order to render whatever part of a game's environment a player is exploring. Hence, whenever a checkpoint in a game has been reached, or whenever a game has been launched at a checkpoint, all of the visual assets needed for the environment of that checkpoint are loaded from static storage, such as a solid state drive or mechanical hard drive, into SDRAM. This doesn't mean that all of the visual assets will be used, but they must all be readily available just in case a player explores parts of the environment that need the particular pieces of data that comprise them. In regard to open world games, which don't have checkpoints, visual assets are continuously streamed into SDRAM from static storage, depending on the proximity of a player-controlled character to certain parts of the game's environment. From a particular distance in a game's environment, a player may not be able to see certain parts of the environment at all. Hence, the visual assets that comprise those parts will not be loaded into SDRAM. However, when the player gets close enough, such that they are on the verge of seeing those parts of the environment from afar, visual assets for those parts of the environment with low levels of detail are loaded into SDRAM, just in case the player indeed gets close enough such that they can see them from afar. Furthermore, as the player becomes increasingly close to those parts of the environment, the visual assets are replaced by versions that have higher levels of detail. This process requires the quantity of a GPU's SDRAM to be in proportion to the resolution and level of graphical quality for which its engineers have designed it. For example, a graphics card that is intended to run modern games at a maximum resolution of 1440p with high or ultra settings may have 8 to 10 gigabytes of SDRAM. On the other hand, a graphics card that is intended to run modern games at 4K with high or ultra settings may have 12 to 16 gigabytes of SDRAM. Higher resolution and graphical quality mean higher quality assets, such as textures and character models, and therefore larger file sizes, which require higher quantities of SDRAM. Just as visual assets are loaded from static storage into SDRAM, they are loaded from SDRAM into cache. Furthermore, just as SDRAM is used to store visual assets that may be needed, cache is used to store the visual assets that are most likely to be needed. The visual assets that are most likely to be needed at any given moment will be rendered repeatedly since they will be in the player's field of view or potentially be in the player's field of view for as long as the player controlled character is in a particular part of a game's environment. Hence, these visual assets will be only a fraction of all of those that are in SDRAM. Therefore, the quantity of cache is significantly smaller than that of SDRAM, having sizes that are only megabytes or kilobytes. However, since the visual assets and cache have to be rendered repeatedly during the time that a player-controlled character is in a particular part of a game's environment, caches are much faster than SDRAM, processing data millions to billions of times per second. Furthermore, there are various levels of cache. Lower levels of cache mean closer proximity to a GPU's processors and higher immediacy of being needed. Furthermore, the lower the level of cache, the more divided the cache is among the GPU's processing components, which means that each subset of it is accessible by a smaller number of processing components. To explain the different levels of cache, we will compare AMD's top card, the RX 6950 XT, and Nvidia's top card, the RTX 3090 Ti. AMD's RX 6950 XT has 80 multiprocessors called Compute Units, or CUs which are divided into 40 peers that are called Workgroup Processors, or WGPs, a total of 1,280 kilobytes of what AMD has designated Level 0 cache is divided among these 40 WGPs, which means that each WGP has 32 kilobytes of Level 0 cache. NVIDIA's RTX 3090 Ti has 84 multiprocessors called Stream Processors, or SMs, and within each of them, 
are 128 processors that are called CUDA cores, which are divided into four groups that each have 32 CUDA cores. Each of these groups has what NVIDIA has designated Level 0 Cache. However, it is not known what the quantity of this Level 0 Cache is. Now, let's talk about Level 1 Cache. Just as the RX 6950 XT's 80 CUs are divided into 40 pairs that are called WGPs, the 40 WGPs are, in turn, divided into 20 pairs that are called arrays, and a total of 2,560 kilobytes of what AMD has designated level 1 cache is divided among these 20 arrays, which means that each array has 128 kilobytes of level 1 cache. As for the RTX 3090 Ti, as already mentioned, it has 84 multiprocessors called Stream Processors, or SMs, and a total of 10,752 kilobytes of what AMD has designated level 1 cache is divided among these 84 SMs, which means that each SM has 128 kilobytes of level 1 cache. As for level 2 cache, the RX 6950 XT has 4 megabytes of level 2 cache, which is not divided, but is shared by all 20 of its arrays. The RTX 3090 Ti has 6 megabytes of level 2 cache, which is also not divided, but is shared by all 84 of its SMs. Now let's talk about level 3 cache. AMD introduced a proprietary level 3 cache that it calls Infinity Cache in its RX 6000 series GPUs. Like the level 2 cache of AMD's RX 6000 series GPUs, it's shared by all arrays. However, it is divided into sections that are each tied to a different memory controller of the SD RAM in order to supplement the bandwidth of the SD RAM. The RX 6950 XT has 128 megabytes of this particular type of cache. On the other hand, the RTX 3090 Ti does not have any equivalent to Infinity Cache. Its level 2 cache is the highest level of cache that it has. As explained in previous videos, under the right conditions, Infinity Cache can triple the effective bandwidth of RX 6000 series cards. The results enable the cards to perform closely to their RTX 30 series competitors, despite the natively lower bandwidths of their SD RAM, relative to those of the RTX 30 series. Subsequently, NVIDIA will include unusually large amounts of level 2 cache in its upcoming RTX 40 series. Unfortunately, it is not known how this cache will be organized or structured within the GPUs, whether or not it will be divided into sections that are each tied to a different memory controller of the GPUs, like the Infinity Cache of the RX 6000 series, has not been revealed. However, we can surmise that it won't necessarily have to be so, and here's why. The Infinity Cache of the RX 6000 series is redundant in a way, since both it and the Level 2 Cache are accessible by all arrays. What makes the Infinity Cache beneficial is its large capacity. For example, the RX 6950 XT has 128 megabytes of it, but has only 4 megabytes of Level 2 Cache. Hence, if the GPU needs data that isn't in level 2 cache, it can check the infinity cache, which will be more likely to have the necessary data due to its large capacity. This arrangement is beneficial to the RX 6000 series GPUs because the bandwidths of their SD RAM are smaller than those of the competing RTX 30 series GPUs. Hence, the level 2 cache would have to wait for an unacceptable amount of time for the necessary data to be sent to it from SD RAM. The infinity cache prevents this problem by acting as a backup pool of data that may be needed and can be acquired much more quickly than it can be acquired from SD RAM. However, the SD RAM of the RTX 40 series GPUs, like the RTX 30 series GPUs, will have adequately large bandwidths. Therefore, an intermediary level of cache between the SD RAM and the level 2 cache won't be necessary. Simply drastically increasing the amount of level 2 cache itself would maximize the probability of data that is needed by the GPU being available in it rather than an SD RAM. As already mentioned, the RTX 40 series will include up to 96 megabytes of level 2 cache, which is 16 times more than the highest amount of level 2 cache among the RTX 30 series GPUs. Since the bandwidths of the SD RAM in AMD's upcoming RX 7000 series GPUs will purportedly be relatively equal in speed to those of the RTX 40 series, both sets of GPUs should be equal more or less in terms of their effective bandwidths. And that's it for this news report on PC gaming hardware. Be sure to thumb this video up, leave some comments below, and hit the subscribe button. Also, please visit and register for an account at eternalgap.com. Peace out.